demonstrating the suspension capabilities of the robot. Quite uh, durable. Constructed out of a uh, what's left of a table. As you can see, there we go. Made up of a square, 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters, with bottom bar, bottom bar. See the spring system. These springs are really very durable, as I have just demonstrated. These all provide off-road off movement. This is one of the other bars. This will sit like that. Of course, this robot is upside down at the moment, but the final version will look a little something like this. This is the track I got. You can see uh, extremely tough rubber, uh, very strong plastic. Yeah, it's very tough. This is brilliant for off-road, so fit that in there. Put them like that. As you can see the track will sit there and then curl around. The wheels will then go inside. Uh, well, actually, the track will be about this sort of height. The wheels will then sit in there. Suspension springs give suspension, so the track itself will come up to about that sort of height. So the robot will be about its drive system will be that high, and you can see it has massive clearance. I mean, turn it upside down, it's going to have that much clearance with about this much extra so it's going to about that much clearance and as you can see it's really lightweight you know it, it, it weighs almost nothing I mean I can hold that just like that it weighs absolutely naffle so it's very lightweight very strong it, I just demonstrated it can hold my weight I'm not a light person I'm quite a heavy person about 100 something kilos so it will support the weight of the robot very uh, very easily. Uh, over here, we have the uh, propulsion system, the motors. As you can see, well, one motor, two motor, uh, three motor, four motor. All will be controlled by the saber tooth, which is this funky little thing here with the heat sink around it. This is the brain of it. Not doing a mega. Very nice little bit of um, freeware stuff. Uh, this will uh, 52 pins that will control the robot. Tell it what to do. Drive sprockets, these will attach onto the end of the motors, like so. These will rotate. The motors will sit. Sorry for all the walking around. Motors will sit, putting the robot back just all the right way. The motors will sit by the of the track out. Motors will sit here and here inside course so most will be here and up here so you have a uh, rear wheel drive and front wheel drive which will give it uh, additional push because it'll be pushing and pulling at the same time instead of traditional tanks which have rear wheel drive uh, which give a lot of push but it doesn't necessarily allow for a lot of speed this will also double the amount of torque it has and double the maximum speed it can go so it should hopefully move at a fairly swift speed and expecting about walking speed nothing too drastic but of course we'll see when I get it uh, all wired up tonight um, a mess up my thumb. Hold on. Um, this uh, will be powered by two motorcycle batteries, uh, 7,000 uh, milliamp hours each, uh, which will give it 1,400 in total, which means it can last for a good few hours before running out of charge. And these are really cheap. I got them off the scrapyard. So I sh uh, I'll probably pay another visit at some point to get two more because I'll, I'll design the batteries. So they sit in the robot. You can just disconnect them when they're dry plug in new ones, connect it all up, and they'll run. So you can have two charging while the other two are running, which will give it a very nice uh, uh, lifespan, especially if you're using it for airsofting, uh, as you don't want to be changing batteries constantly. So big batteries are the best thing. They're like a fiver each uh, off the scrapyard. It just takes a bit of time to get them all fully charged again, because once they're uh, fully drained, it's a bit of a bitch to get them trained up, but you can get uh, special equipment to do that. So yeah, this is the framework of it. Uh, the weapon system has not yet arrived. Uh, I was hoping it had arrived today because I could demonstrate that. I'll be fitting an FNP-90 to it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, it is, again, for airsofting. The FNP-90 is kind of a standard uh, SMG uh, submachine gun for those who don't know the lingo. 
uh, which is a very reliable short range weapon that will sit on the top on a rotating turret so it will be uh, uh, fully remote controllable video camera so you can see through its eyes controlling through either radio or most likely through XB which is unique to the Arduino which will allow me up to a mild communication range uh, weapon system will be on an independent circuit so that uh, should I need to cut power to it I can just flip a kill switch and kill all powerful weapons make it safe LEDs will come on signifying the weapons are armed and ready so anyone who go, walks past it knows it's dangerous height of the robot will probably come up to about uh, here I reckon so I get the ruler out it's already at about 20 centimeters take uh, add the wheels onto it it'll probably be about 30 centimeters so top height of the robot will probably be about half a meter so probably be about that high adding the weapon and stuff, which is quite high, quite nice for a robot. Um, all in all, weight-wise, I have no idea what's going to weigh at the fin uh, final stage, but hopefully it shouldn't weigh too much. Right, and that's the end of the demonstration. Hope you enjoyed it.